away from sport. We have a guest in the house um, who his life is about fencing, and a lot of people will wonder what fencing is about. Um, I have um, Evanson Okoro in the house. He's a fencing coach. It's good to have you. Great to be here. Yeah, so in a few days, and especially on Saturday, we'll be celebrating, the world will be celebrating World Fencing Day. Fencing to a lot of Nigerians. I'm sure people outside will be wondering what's fencing and all that. Um, but thank God, courtesy of people like you, the sport fencing has been um, um, going viral in Nigeria. You are a fencer yourself, and um, you are also a fencing coach. Tell us what fencing is all about. Well, um it's great to be here, everyone. Um, my name is Harrison, and um, well, fencing basically is a sport, as we all know. Um, but um, people kind of get it mixed up um, on the fact that once fencing is mentioned, the first thing that comes to their mind are the movies, okay. you know. But then fencing is like an actual sport, just like every other sport, and for over a hundred years, it has played an iconic role at the Olympic Games. So the basic concept about fencing is basically trying to hit and not get hit. So it's just like martial arts, it's combat, it's like boxing, you know, you want to get a few punches, but yet you don't want your opponent to punch you. But fencing is designed in a way where you've got certain tools, like weapons, what you can see, you know, from yeah. the screen. And you're meant to, you know, just use that weapon, try to hit your opponent and also defend yourself. So you can't use your hand. Everything you do is subjected, you know, just with your weapon. So in martial arts, um, things like distance come in play, strategy and all those things come in play. And that is basically, you know, it's, it's, a whole co you know, it's complicated. It's quite hazy until you do it to understand. But fencing is really exciting in the sense that if you get into it and you know how it's played, you know, you get to now start feeling and enjoying, you know, what the benefits or what it should be all about. Yeah, there's so much going on for fencing in Nigeria, but it's still obviously like an alien sport of a lot of people. Yeah. And um, in, um, in World Fencing Day coming on, on Saturday, because it's always celebrated every second Saturday. Every second Saturday in September. In September. Mm -hmm. And second Saturday in September will be on... Um, on Saturday. On this end. Saturday yes. coming. Um, tell us what this um, helmet, the sword, mm -hmm. and... Um, what is it all about? The equipment, the equipment accessories okay. they, they wear. Tell okay. us. Um, just like every other sport, you know, fencing comes with a risk. It's just like soccer. Um, footballers tend to get injuries. But based on how fencing is designed, we make use of weapons, you know, and things like that. So that will always, you know, bring worries to people's mind. But mind you, those equipments, one, are designed specifically with safety in mind. For example, you can see the, the, the mask that they put on is made by a metal steel mesh and um, there are different types and sizes. For example, the ones for competition that they use over there is about 600 and, um, 1,500 newtons, which means in science, it means that the only force that can you know, pierce through that metal steel mesh is a force of about you know, 1,500 newtons. So that in, in reality, a human hand can't really do that except to use a gun and you know, so that actually ensures the fencer or whoever is using it that you are safe, you know, as long as you want to fence. The same thing goes to the whites you see them putting on. The same material used to make the white um, is Kefla. Kefla is the same material used to make um, bulletproof vests. So it's just, you know, the, the protective equipment and gear is basically to protect you, you know, from you know all around and keep you safety conscious you know that's what we call it the first rule in, in fencing is safety first so i think if we try to imbibe it into real life you know everyone has to be safety conscious for example in nigeria right now we've got insecurity and things like that we shouldn't rely on, put our safety on any other person but ourselves first before we even you know, put it to any other person. Okay, now one for today, what, what does it mean to Nigerians? Ah. Um, you are also very close to the Federation. Yeah. Um, is, is the Federation doing something towards um, what fencing they? Before I even, I even go through that, how, how far has Nigerian um, embraced fencing as a sport? Um, well, in Nigeria, uh, in as much as fencing is fairly new, you know, to a whole lot of people, Nigerians have, you know, Nigerians have come across have, you know, really embraced fencing. Many know about fencing. The only thing is that many don't know fencing does exist in Nigeria. So whenever they hear fencing in Nigeria, they're like, for real? Some of them really doubt, you know, if it's the same thing done out there that is done here. That was similarly to how it was when I took up fencing. I took up fencing in 2012. 
So I knew fencing from when I was a kid, watch it on Eurosport and everything. And the person who introduced me to it told me, do you know fencing? I'm like, yes. And I say, fencing in Nigeria. I'm like, really? And I'm like, I'm in. So that is basically how it has been to, you know, people in Nigeria. That people are tending to get it. There's fencing in Lagos right now. Um, you're probably aware that I moved to Port Harcourt. Yes. So as to open an academy there. So people in Abuja are calling, you know, wanting fencing to come over there. So it's, you know, I think it, it's just a matter of time. Fencing is already getting mainstream a little bit because of the, you know, since the event of the social media and okay, everything. Okay. So people are getting to know it and we hope through this medium, you know, people will get to know that there's fencing in Nigeria and more people can, you know. Okay, now let, let's look at the continent of Africa. Which nation can you say um, is doing better than we're doing in terms of fencing or which nation can we say that um, is the orb of fencing in Africa? Um, the basic hub of fencing in Africa, if we have to be very realistic, yes, we, there are competition, but we just have to give it to them, is Egypt. Everyone Egypt. knows about Egypt in sports. Egypt have been doing pretty well you know, in fencing. As a matter of fact, um, they are one of the countries in Africa who have gotten a medal at the Olympics. Because mm -hmm. in Africa, there are basically two, just two Olympic medalists from Africa. One was an Egyptian, another is a female fencer from Tunisia. So okay. those are the only two medals that has come to the whole of Africa. Since them um, fencing in, yeah, in the Olympics. The so that Olympics. is how competitive fencing is. You know, you see the Americans, the Europeans, those guys are way on another level. But um, in this generation and this time, most people in the juniors category, you know, Africa is beginning to emerge. You know, it's another wave, a new crop of players. And we even got a couple of Nigerians that are into that mix. So we're trying to look, okay, within the next two, three Olympics, like on the screen, you can see two Nigerian yeah, fencing, both okay. are Nigerian fencers as well. Okay. And pretty, you know, talented, doing very well. So we're looking within the next two, three Olympics, you know, Nigeria should be mixing things, you know, right there with the top of the ball. Currently, as it stands, Egypt, you know, is doing really great. Algeria is another country. Um, South Africa is catching up. And um, Nigeria as well. We have to include our own country as well. Nigeria. Obviously. Obviously, for every success story, there's always challenges. Yes. And I'm sure fencing is not exempted. So what are the challenges of um, fencing? Um, let's look at it from the angle of um, to embrace it, not from the angle of an administrator and a coach. What do you think are the challenges for a child or an adult that want to embrace fencing? Because you've gone through all those processes. Yeah. Um, well, well, number one, um, the major challenge everyone tends to look at is say fencing is an expensive sport. Expensive you know, they, sport. They, we look at that and say that, yeah, fencing is an expensive sport. But then, um, if I decide to look at my own story, and if I had to look at that, I, probably I wouldn't be fencing okay. today. Because I could remember when I started, you know, even my folks didn't support me at that time. My dad was still trying to embrace me, and football hasn't gotten to where it's meant to be, and you're seeing fencing things like that. But, you know, I tend to tell people that if you've got a plan, you know, that's one of the things fencing does to you. Fencing helps you in making that plan. You know, you tend to understand, okay, these equipments are expensive, but then I might, you know, I can get them in bits. That is another one. Okay. Well, I can share. If I get to a club, clubs usually provide equipment so I can use the club equipment prior to when I can, yeah, you know, that us. thing. Yeah, so that's one thing, equipment. Number two is pushing the career you know, in fencing, basically because of the um, cost involved. We don't yet have sponsorship, like corporate sponsorship or even um, Nigeria supporting fencers. So most fencers are, how will I say, they, are, they fund themselves to do most things right now, which is not easy. But these are things we know that within the next couple of years, if we could get the right bodies in place, you know, the right support from the sports ministry and co um, Nigerian fencers could get it easy, you know, taking on a sport like fencing. When they see, okay, this is being covered by this, this is being covered by, okay, this is what I need to do. Yeah. Okay, lastly, um, what stage have Nigeria been to in fencing, global stage, the global, global title we've gotten? Uh, I know, have, have, you, have you been to the Olympics? It's the fencing mm. in the All African Games. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what has been the. Um, highest um, title the, uh, a fencer from Nigeria has um, achieved? The highest um, um, a fencer from Nigeria has achieved, I think, was at uh, Benjin. There was a Nigerian at the Benjin Olympics, but then it wasn't really, you know, the, the wave of fencing in Nigeria wasn't really good. So okay. we were looking at, okay, what happens afterwards? But in the qualifiers for the last Olympics, the highest 
any fence her fence her blessing or loud there i guess yes yeah, came up to, you know she reached up to the final of the qualifiers okay. so had she lost by two points had it been okay. that she won that bout she would have been at the last okay. olympics so okay. but nigerians fans at the african championships we've won a couple of medals at the african okay. championships we've been to the world championships the commonwealth fencing championships okay. and we've been doing you know pretty well you know at those tournaments but um we've set sights at the olympics the olympics has been the major target and we're looking at the next Olympics happening in, in Paris, France. Okay. So hopefully we get one or two people over there. Yes, um, thank you very much, um, thank you very much Avisi so much. Noko, for being part of the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, as well, Avisi yeah. Noko is a fence and also the coach, he has um, academy in Port Harcourt. Yes, um, that's all we could take on to this segment of um, Plus Sport. Don't forget, same time tomorrow, we'll be giving you all this trending um, in the world of sport. And don't for, for forget to be part of all our social medias where the conversation never stops.